Thank you for joining our session entitled The Natural Benefits of Including Nature in Water Business Strategy here on the Private Sector Forum side stage of the UN Global Compact's Uniting Business Live Conference. I'm Jason Morrison. As President of the Pacific Institute and Head of the UN Global Compact CEO Water Mandate, I am thrilled to host this session. We are excited to have a fantastic set of high-profile speakers who will be touching on how their companies have included nature-based solutions in their corporate water strategy. They'll also be discussing the challenges in operationalizing these nature-based solutions and opportunities to bring them to scale. I'd like to welcome Mary Draves, Chief Sustainability Officer and Vice President, Environmental Health and Safety for Dow, Emilio Tenuta, Senior Vice President and Chief Sustainability Officer for Ecolab, and Pilar Cruz, Chief Sustainability Officer for Cargill. We all know that current climate conditions require urgent action on water. And this is the time to scale solutions that connect businesses directly with nature. Nature-based solutions can provide such a pathway by simultaneously addressing a range of corporate, social, and environmental challenges related to climate change. These include water supply reliability, poor water quality, natural disaster risk, and significant biodiversity loss. NBS provide multiple stacked benefits at the water climate biodiversity nexus. Nature-based solutions, or even a combination of green gray infrastructure, can be used to address both climate adaptation and mitigation. During this session, we will unpack some of the hurdles to implementing nature-based solutions. We'll also shed light on ways to upscale and mainstream NBS from a corporate perspective, including exploring alternatives that ensure that collective action in water and climate considers both human and natural systems holistically. With that, I yield the floor to our speakers so they can share how their companies consider and include nature in their business strategy. When it comes to including nature in business strategy, it helps to paint the context first of what sustainability means at Dow. It's the lens in which we make business decisions, run our operations, and how we innovate new products and safer, more sustainable materials. In fact, our company's purpose is to deliver a sustainable future for the world through our material science expertise and in collaboration with our partners. We have a long history of setting ambitious sustainability commitments and actions including our recent targets to address climate and plastic waste and our 2025 sustainability goals. As part of these goals, Dow launched its groundbreaking Valuing Nature goal in 2015 with the aim to value nature in capital, real estate business development, and new products. The scale at which we've considered nature and decision-making across our global businesses has never been done before. We are now more than halfway toward our target to delivering $1 billion in net present value from projects that deliver more environmental and financial value. These nature-based solutions are incorporated into our capital investments, and we see the possibility of using nature to address all our critical areas of impact, carbon, water, biodiversity, and society. We are committed to identifying and executing valuing nature projects that unlock value for nature and business together, creating tremendous value for the environment, our customers, and for Dow. During this pandemic, it has never been more clear. We are one people, sharing one world. In fact, this pandemic shows us just how important valuing nature is. It demonstrates how our health, economic stability, and nature are all interconnected. COVID-19 has touched almost every part of our world. It has highlighted the importance of global preparedness and collaboration. And it has reminded us that when it comes to our well-being, we are all in this together. Every day, we connect farmers with markets, customers with ingredients, and people and animals with the food they need to thrive. Cargill's 155,000 employees across 70 countries work relentlessly to achieve our purpose of nourishing the world in a safe, responsible, and sustainable way. At our core, we are an agriculture company, and that's where our sustainability approach is rooted. 
We see agriculture as a powerful way to advance water stewardship, ensuring a safe, secure, and sustainable food system. Our food system is resilient, but there are big challenges in producing food and ensuring reliable access to clean water for, for a growing population in a changing climate. Water is a limited resource. We can't create new sources of clean water or control nature to ensure we have a consistent supply. Communities around the world are facing extreme drought conditions, scorching heat and major floods, all of which are a result of a changing climate. These natural events can significantly impact our global food supply and jeopardize the livelihoods of farmers and communities who need access to safe, clean drinking water. Many of these issues are intertwined from extreme weather events, biodiversity loss, pollution, and inefficient use of natural resources. Across all, one thing remains the same. Water is at the center. And this is why Cargill has set ambitious water targets. Last year, we announced industry-leading water targets to achieve sustainable water management in our operations and all priority watersheds by 2030. We're focusing our efforts where it matters the most and where we can drive the most significant change. Water usage in our operations and in the priority watersheds where we operate and source from. One of the ways we're working to meet our water targets is by supporting farmer adoption of regenerative agriculture. Cargill supports farmer-led efforts to adopt regenerative agriculture practices across 10 million acres of cropland in North America by 2030 a key step in delivering our climate and water ambitions. We also have a sustainable grazing partnership with the Walmart Foundation and McDonald's. Together, we are working on a 1 million acre grazing initiative to restore grasslands, which helps sequester carbon and protect and restore water resources across Montana, Nebraska, and South Dakota. We're also developing innovative programs, deploying place-based approaches, and working arm-in-arm -arm with producers so that we can deliver on our sustainability commitments and help our customers meet their commitments. Everyone stands the benefit from nature-based solutions, including farmers and their communities. Yes, here's, here's how we consider nature in, in, in our strategy. As the global leader in industrial water management, Ecolab has made water stewardship a, a core strategy for the company for over a decade now, with a focus on really taking action inside and outside the fence line um, for our customers and our own operations. First, let me, let me share a bit about our customer outcomes, where we can actually leverage our expertise and solutions to help our customers drive positive outcomes in their operations related to water stewardship. In fact, by 2030, our, our ambition is to help our customers save uh, 300 billion gallons of water each year, equivalent to the annual drinking water needs of a billion people. And nature-based solutions is one of the growing pathways to helping our customers achieve business resilience. For our own operations, we're a co-founder of the Water Resilience Coalition. And we've adopted a net positive water impact target that really has three parts to it. First is being able to, to drive a net positive water impact uh, in our operations. It, second, it's to focus on water resilient value chains. And three, it's raising the ambition of water resilience through public and corporate outreach. So to summarize, we are, as a company, are working toward restoring greater than 50% of our water withdrawal and achieve the Alliance for Water Stewardship certification in at-risk sites in which we operate. And so those three components conclude, you know, taking the steps to adopt AWS standard, working on interventions to address the shared water challenges uh, that al allow us to reduce demand, freshwater demand in our operations. And then third, how we work with partners to implement nature-based solutions to address those shared water challenges associated with availability, quality, and access. 
Thank you for sharing these inspiring examples of how natural systems can be connected to the way companies manage their business. I now open our panel by asking our speakers to further elucidate how they translate the visions they just shared into action. What challenges and opportunities have you found in operationalizing nature-based solutions? Thanks for your question, Jason. And it's a journey. When it comes to challenges, sometimes it's about resistance to change or uncertainty around cost and performance. And we've addressed these same challenges by first addressing our internal stakeholders at Dow, creating the business case for nature-based solutions that are relevant to our company. We looked at solutions we'd already implemented, articulated the benefits, and made sure we could quantify the full value, not just capital, but operations, maintenance, avoided costs. Most of our efforts touched water, and water is a critical raw material for Dow. Nature-based solutions, such as treatment wetlands, proved to be a winning proposition. And clear support for nature-based solutions from leadership is key to overcoming resistance. The adoption of the nature goal, driving projects that are good for business and better for ecosystems, has been a catalyst for that broader adoption. For instance, now every proposal on a capital project has to answer the question, have you considered a nature-based solution? We've also worked with a third-party expert, the Nature Conservancy, or TNC, to collaborate on internal and external case studies. These solutions and the future potential that TNC brings really sealed the deal. TNC has been a great partner, and we celebrated our 10-year collaboration this year. Cost is likely another common hurdle to nature-based solutions. Pilot projects can really support the nature-based solutions still do need the support of pilot projects in many cases. We have had great success in Europe where we're tapping into European funding to advance these solutions and encourage circular water usage. Looking ahead at tackling physical climate risks associated with water reliability, Dow and TNC will be working around our most water stress sites, starting with the U.S. Gulf Coast, to identify and implement watershed level projects aimed at improving both water quality and water quality in the region. Water can determine a farmer's survival. Drought conditions can cause crop losses, affect crop quality, and reduce water supplies available to livestock, all of which ultimately impact a farmer's bottom line. The good news is that farmers are already taking action. They feel firsthand the impacts of climate change and extreme weather conditions like drought and flooding. We have an opportunity to help farmers develop resiliency to extreme weather conditions through regenerative agriculture and nature-based practices. We are working to remove barriers by funding education, training and agronomic assistance, connecting farmers to cost-sharing options and creating ecosystem service markets. This work can also have financial benefits for the farmer and provide clean water and mitigate climate change for all of us. Some of the challenges and opportunities that exist in operationalizing uh, nature-based solutions for companies include, um, you know, the benefits, the volumetric benefits, uh, the quality improvements that we make within these projects and no doubt the easiest benefits to measure include these tangible metrics such as acreage impacted or water flows or number of species. The challenge, of course, is the harder measures, the downstream impacts, things like water quality improvements or reduced flooding events. It takes time to observe and document these benefits. And, and it's, at times it's hard to link those benefits to our work versus someone else in that watershed. And so even though we definitely need to try, we need to keep in mind though, the bigger picture, which is how we catalyze these investments to reduce the impairments to water basins and improve the health of that watershed. Now, quantifying the environmental and social benefits from a water management plan for a project can also be challenging, especially when it comes to you know, biodiversity measurements such as wildlife uh, species and uh, the nutrient load to a, to a watershed. We'll see more investment in NBS in nature-based solutions as we improve our ability to quantitatively link financial investments to positive outcomes or, you know, ecosystem benefits. For example, 
reducing water treatment costs associated with forest protection and headwaters, or reduce downstream flood damages associated with floodplain restoration. Being able to communicate these quantified benefits to our stakeholders, which includes social and ecosystem improved impacts, is an imperative and one that will be aligned with a company's water strategy. Thank you for sharing these important insights. To add to these, I'd like to share one observation from our work at the CO Water Mandate. We have found that a lack of a standardized approach to nature-based solutions is often a barrier for many businesses new to the issue. Specifically, the lack of a standardized approach for identifying and accounting for the benefits accrued from NBS investments can be often a hurdle that prevents uptake. But there is good news. We have recently launched a new tool to help businesses overcome those barriers. In collaboration with our partners, The Nature Conservancy, Limnotech, and Denon, the Sea Water Mandate has launched the NBS Benefits Explorer. This free web-based tool has been developed to serve as a key starting point for organizations looking to invest in nature-based solutions. You can find the tool at nbsbenefitsexplore.net. And you can find more information on the CEO Water Mandate's broader work on NBS on our website at ceowatermandate.org. In that same line, turning back to our panelists, how can we mainstream and upscale further investment in nature-based solutions by companies around the world? A great question, Jason. As the climate crisis intensifies, the impacts on our shared freshwater resources are far reaching. Businesses like us depend on having abundant fresh water to ensure that continued safe operation of our manufacturing facilities worldwide. Today, 2.2 billion people around the world are living in water stressed areas. And the same will be true for more than half the world's population by 2050 if no action is taken. We have both the responsibility and opportunity to collaborate with other sectors of society on solutions, combining our resources and efforts to ensure there are sustainable and resilient freshwater resources for all. Strategic partnerships and networking are also key, which is why Dow is one of the seven co-founding companies that joined the business-led initiative of the UN Global Compact's CEO Water Mandate, mobilizing businesses to advance water stewardship. In 2020, Dow, along with other members of the CEO Water Mandate, launched the Water Resilience Coalition, or WRC. The initiative aims to bring together global corporate leaders to reduce water stress by 2050. We are committed to collaborating to ensure freshwater basins are able to consistently supply the water needed for communities, businesses, and the natural environment. WRC members are committed to continuous progress through six elements of stewardship, direct operations, supply chain, and watershed management, collective action, public policy, community engagement, and transparency. Through this partnership with WRC and other members, we are co-funding nature-based solutions in key water stress basins. The bottom line is businesses can learn lessons from nature. In nature, diversity often translates into healthier ecosystems, resilience, and improved productivity. Likewise, companies are recognizing that more inclusive business models and collaborations that include diverse actors can drive both economic growth and accelerate impact on addressing our UN Sustainable Development Goals. Organizations need to share experiences and strategies of internal organizational support needed to scale those nature-based solutions and adopt them. It's time to collaborate and invest in global efforts to reduce climate change and take care of nature. We are all in this together, and we all have a role to play. Cargill is in a unique position to impact multiple supply chains and environmental practices globally. But we realize that we need everyone working together, businesses, communities, NGOs, governments, and the financial sector to invest in nature-based solutions. We must work in partnership across our supply chain and in our communities and with partners to ensure we're elevating today's challenges to the top of the corporate agenda. One way we do this is through the Global Water Resilience Coalition. Alongside other companies, we are helping to drive collective action in water-stressed areas where it matters the most. 
Collaborating and finding nature-based solutions for water issues is critical. Through partnership, collaboration, and innovation, we can, and we will, have a positive impact on water resilience. Our food systems depends on it. We can mainstream and scale investment in nature-based solutions and companies around the world by leveraging partnerships. The Water Resilience Coalition raises global water stress at the top of the corporate agenda and works to preserve the world's freshwater resources through collective action and ambitious quantifiable commitments in water stress basins. Nature-based solutions is one intervention to achieve net positive water impact and a healthier watershed. Being able to leverage industry partnerships that bring together some of the biggest brands in the world to band together to leverage scale in these projects, which reduces our learning curve and, and scales investments and shares best practices on how we can adopt a, a context-based approach to delivering these positive outcomes. We also work with reliable partners and consider how these opportunities can support this larger initiative and collaboration with such organizations such as the Nature Conservancy or Limnotech or the Pacific Institute, where they take a science-based approach to verifying the impacts and benefits. Other examples of partnerships that can also help us include engaging with geographic collaboratives, such as the California Water Action Collaborative in the Santa Ana Watershed and the Texas Water Action Collaborative, where we can work with public-private partnerships to drive collective action in these high-risk regions. More than ever, there's a growing interest in investment and recognition that the, of the value of Nature Base brings to at-risk watersheds. And when done right with the right partners, we're making a meaningful, measurable impact that supports a healthier future for the planet, for business, and for all of us. Thank you for those insights. From our perspective, a key way to upscale these solutions is through collective action. And we have a platform for that as well. This platform is called the Water Action Hub and supports global collaboration on water, including a wide range of opportunities to partner with other companies and organizations on MBS. It also provides guidance on how to identify, develop and implement projects across a range of focal areas covering water security and sustainability, as well as climate resilience. In addition, the Water Action Hub provides case studies and lessons learned from NBS projects around the world. And it provides opportunity to match other organizations in specific countries and basins and industry sectors. You can access the Water Action Hub at wateractionhub.org. To close, nature-based solutions may not be the only answer to the challenges we face today. Rather, these solutions are a powerful part of a broader toolkit that will help us address water security and resilience. Companies are at a unique position to further the inclusion of nature in their corporate strategies. By using innovative tools, fostering collective action, and considering both nature, natural, and human systems in climate change solutions, we can build the business case for NBS investments. We need to start somewhere, so I'd like to invite you all to add NBS to your policies, projects, and programs. I'd like to thank our speakers for sharing their inspiring experiences and to thank you for joining our session. I hope you continue to glean actionable insights at other sessions over the next couple of days at the UN Global Compact's Uniting Business Live Conference. Thanks again, and bye for now.